myself by looking at a display on the paper industry set up near my gate. A maintenance man sweeping up around the display caught my attention, so I glanced over, smiled, and then returned to the wonders of turning Georgia Pines into toilet paper. <laughs> Next thing I know, he's asking me if I might know how to talk his wife out of filing for divorce. <laughs> I am the sort of person people talk to. <laughs> Total strangers type people. Most of the time, I really like this about me, but sometimes, after a stranger has sort of vomited their thoughts all over me, I'm left wondering, why did they feel I needed to know that? <laughs> like last winter, I went to Massachusetts to visit our younger son, who was a student at Hampshire College. It had snowed a lot the night I arrived, so the next morning, instead of venturing out, I opted to eat in the hotel breakfast room. There was no one in the place when I arrived, so I carefully chose a spot on the banquette where I could see the snow. I wanted to just sit there quietly and watch it, because there was a lot of snow. And for a Midwesterner who's been living in the South for nearly 20 years, looking out at a lot of snow qualifies as a major entertainment. <laughs> However, by sitting on the banquette to enjoy the view, I made my first mistake. Too late, I remembered from my days of waiting table that people who show up without a dining partner always sit on the banquette. And sure enough, within a few minutes, a woman settled herself at the table next to mine. My second mistake was I made eye contact. I nodded. <laughs> And then, like an idiot, I said, hey. <laughs> Why, you might ask, when I wanted solitude, would I self-sabotage so completely? <laughs> Maybe it's genetic, but I gotta tell you, living in the South has definitely contributed to my condition. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Down here, people say hey to anything that moves. <laughs> I think it's a rule. Yesterday, I said hey to a chipmunk. <laughs> the genetic part is, I'm just... Friendly. I'm also a curious, some would say nosy sort of person. One of my kids once said, if we got on an elevator and there was a guy passed out in the corner, by the time we got to the fifth floor, mom would know where he's from. <laughs> hell, I said hello to people on the street when I lived in New York City, and everyone knows that only crazy people say hello. <laughs> so why do I do it? Who knows? But I keep doing it because sometimes it pays off. I've had some really interesting, even fascinating exchanges with complete strangers. Last winter in Massachusetts was not one of those times. <laughs> Last winter in Massachusetts was one of those times when I found myself wishing I weren't the sort of person who invites the world in for a chat. Within minutes, the woman who sat down next to me told me all about her brilliant credentials, her brilliant career, her brilliant husband, before informing me that Hampshire College, the school my son attends, the very son I just told her in answer to the only question she asked me, that I come to visit, is overrun with drugs. <laughs> she emphasized overrun as if I had missed the point. <laughs> she finished by telling me of her brilliant child who will attend a brilliant college where there apparently will be no drugs. <laughs> And then she was gone, leaving me with a mild headache and wondering why on earth she felt I should know this. And then I thought, bless her heart, maybe she's lonely. And I'd really like to be able to tell you that that's the only thing I thought. <laughs> but that was simply the thought I tried really, really hard to hang on to while my brain was screaming, lonely, fuck yeah, she's lonely. Because everyone she knows thinks she is an obnoxious asshole and they refuse to listen to her. I suspect a lot of people who talk to me are lonely. They just want someone to talk to. And I thank God that they're not all assholes because sometimes they're just crazy. <laughs> My very first night in Columbus, I encountered a woman in the grocery store who told me her dog was constipated. <laughs> Which is why she was buying dozens
Lake Bottom proper here at the Springer, also likes to take pills prescribed for animals. <laughs> but then I realized she was telling me that the pill had been prescribed to her by a people doctor because she too is constipated. <laughs> <laughs> Only she doesn't actually take the pill. Instead, every night before bed, she herself, and that's exactly how she said it, I myself, eats an apple and a few raisins. And every morning she drinks a large cup of plain hot water. Ugh. After that, her system is right as rain. <laughs> I was so fascinated, the clerk had to prompt me to sign my slip. <laughs> it was only later that I wondered, why did she feel I needed to know that? You know, as often as this sort of thing happens to me, it never fails to amaze me that people feel the need to take a stranger or a room full of strangers captive for five minutes or so <laughs> to tell them all sorts of stuff.